here with Daichibu, just showing how to basically start making yakitori. I'm gonna redo that. <laughs> All right, let's go. One, two, three. I, I've never done it with someone. I'm just gonna stare at the light. Yeah, That's just. All. Hey Yaki Gang, Yakitori Guy here. Today I'm here with H. Wu in his kitchen and he just bought this brand new Kondo grill and we wanted to do an unboxing as well as cook some Yakitori and just see how it works out. My friend H. Wu Lee is a private dinner chef who got into cooking hosting supper clubs while an undergrad at USC. You're gonna watch me cook for myself. On his Instagram and TikTok, H. Wu shares fun tutorials for people to create delicious upscale dishes at home. Check out his channel for his videos and info on his upcoming dinner events. Go ahead and let's All open right. this up. I also got a little fan to go with it. So what made you decide to get a Kono grill? I have always wanted to get into yakitori and grilling with Binchotan. I saw this specific grill at the restaurant that I staged at, Kato in Los Angeles. And I didn't meet yakitori guy yet, so I just kind of bought it. And where'd you get this grill? I got it off Corin, okay. based in New York. So we're calling this a Kono grill, mainly because that's what it's been named and marketed, not just here on Corin, but pretty much on TV shows everywhere in the Western States. But the word Kondo is just Japanese for the word stove or grill, so everyone's been calling this a grill grill. So what do you call a yakitori grill? Well, the yakitori grill in restaurants in Japan, they're made out of metal and it's insulated with ceramic on the inside and they're called a yakidai. Basically just means a grilling stand. And it's pretty hard to get right now, right? Sold out everywhere. It took about two months to ship because they were going to restock. But it's finally here. Check out. Yep, don't cook this indoors, guys. Carbon monoxide hazard. And how much was this one? I think it's around $300. I think it was around, yeah, $250, $300. Was this the size that they were using at the restaurant? This was around the same size okay. that they were using at the restaurant. Mesh grill top right here. So yeah, it's actually this like V indented into like a V form. But yeah, let's get this out. It's definitely lighter than it looks. It's got that porous ceramic. But just in terms of construction, compared to some of the other grills, got the handles, they got rubber feet, so preventing, I guess, damaging the, the tabletops. And the vents are actually on both sides, the front and back. Or most not on both sides. Usually you just only need it on one side because whatever side you're grilling on, that's where you're gonna control. Looks like a sheet metal that's bent. Very simple design. Got sheet metal and the staples holding these brick parts together. The inside are V-shaped, so wider on the top, narrow. So that way, you can have the, the charcoal inside and the heat's just gonna expand wide. We see the vent holes. Interesting, it's placed on the opposite corners here. So this, we have the vent right here. Now the other side, we have another vent hole right here as well. And you also got this uh, accessory stand that works so that way you won't damage your table or melt it. All right, and earlier today, we broke up some chickens and made some skewers, including right here, we got some Wagyu skewers. So let's check out this grill, see how it works out. Definitely really hot. Yeah, I can notice we're getting sort of the heat bouncing. So it's definitely hotter than the metal grills that I've been using. So we got these charcoal really hot by fanning it, but definitely there's a noticeable difference in the heat that's radiating from inside the grill. Just putting your hand above here, it's very hot. But let's go ahead and temperature check. 12, 1200, 1270, 1300. So right off the bat, I would say it's about 100 degrees hotter just being in this grill. All right, so the grill is nice and hot. So let's go ahead and put these rods on. And because H. Wu here wants to learn how to yakitori, I'm gonna have him do it as I pretty much guide him along. Here we got chicken tenders. Salt on both sides, just lightly. Okay. Put some sake spray on both front and back. And put it in between the rods. Salt. Other side. Okay, and put on the grill. We can space these out a little bit. Fan away any of the ashes. Oh, you can smell. Oh, it smells so good. The San Bin Chotan. You can go over. 
and it's actually, you, you think it's gonna cool down the chicken, it, it's actually raising the temperature of the coal so much. All right, let's see what the vent will do. These, uh, go the other side. I have to worry about two. This is when I first noticed that my yaktiri rods keep on sliding on this grill. I'm stacking the coals up high to get it closer to the skewers. This konno grill is deeper than other home type grills, so you're gonna need to use more bean chotan to fill it up, so keep that in mind. Is that black or like dark as of the ash? Flared up a bit. Yeah. So we don't want that stuff. So it definitely runs hotter. I'm trying to figure out the, the best positioning of the charcoal. This is a uh, sliding around though. So that's. I guess you can use bigger sticks. Yeah, that's good fanning. So what we're trying to do is basically get that smoke that's escaping because of the wind sort of back onto it. So you can even cover it this way if you want to switch positions. The smoke is going that way. So put the smoke right here and basically fan the smoke back onto the skewer. This is something you don't have to worry about inside of a yaktori restaurant where there's no wind. All right, now we're grilling up some skin and some hearts. The skin is extra fatty and so it's prone to flare up. So it's a really good skewer to test with. Maybe we can start flipping these to the side. Yep. Yeah, get to the side. Ooh, all this smoke. So if it starts flaring up, just blow out the flame with the fan. Yep, keep fanning it. Just looking at the doneness. Yeah, it's good. Looking good. Ooh, so smoke. The heart. The ta -da. Whoa, yeah. Yeah, do it back on chicken hearts. That was all one chicken breast worth of skin on one stir. We're done grilling all the skewers and just using the last of the heat to grill up some chicken wings. All right, so it's three hours in. I would say the charcoal is about maybe one thirds left. Lower heat, but that makes it so you can slowly cook some of these meats. And this is the chicken wings. Recently, I've been doing the deboned, sort of filleted out chicken wings, but I also do like chicken wings done as whole. You get that crispy skin, but it's really juicy, steamy meat on the inside. So I like this method too. All right, so we have here, looks about maybe a quarter of the charcoal that we started. It's maybe about this much full. We got a quarter left. So now that we're done, basically we have a little bit of charcoal left. Turn it off, we can put it inside of a pot and basically just seal it, like get rid of the oxygen and that will turn it off. Or a quicker way for me, I just dunk it in water. So if you wanna go ahead and start dunking these in water, hear that sound, pew. Remove the bean jotan from the water, let it dry to reuse. Here's what it looks like. First day use. All right, so we just put out the charcoal and we wanna finish cleaning it. It did come with the instructions, so we're taking a look at that. When you're finished using the grill, wait for the coals to burn out completely before discarding, or remove burning coals into a fireproof container and extinguish with sand. Never pour water into the Conroe grill. So don't pour the water into here because of this the ceramic, you might crack it. Step two. When the grill has cooled, wipe the inside of the grill with a moist rag or paper towel to clean. 
So wait till it cools down though, because you don't want to crack it, but it's telling you to use a moist towel to basically wipe all around the outside. The last step is make sure grill has cooled completely before storing. And make sure to wash your grill top and you have to do it with a hot soapy sponge. All right, so that was our day one with HWU's new kondo. What do you think about it? I thought it was great. You can make really good yakitori on this at home and need some more time with it, but I did enjoy this first experience. I'm excited to just keep using this and see how well it goes on in the future. Yeah, for your first time, you were able to make good yakitori on it. So yes, you can definitely make good yakitori on it. The one key difference I noticed with this grill versus my middle only grills that I use is that these ceramic walls did bounce the heat and it's reflective off of each other, really holding that heat inside. So inside here, even where I didn't have charcoal in, it's pretty warm where normally I would leave a small charcoal there to just kind of have like a hot side and a warm side. So this definitely, because this is a ceramic, retention of heat much higher on this one. And when we did the temperature check, we saw maybe about 100 degrees difference. However, it didn't do anything about in terms of did the charcoal last longer just because it was in this grill versus a metal grill. That didn't really change. And, and sometimes with yakitori cooking, having the hottest temperature, it may not be the most ideal. So that's something where you can always control whether you have these vents, the fan, or the amount of charcoal you use. So whether you go with this grill or any of the other grills that are has specifications or features for yakitori, can't really go wrong. Just use the techniques that I showed you in the previous lessons on how to make good yakitori. You can apply it onto this grill, you can apply it onto other grill, and you're gonna be learning. Hey, so now that you have this, are you gonna be making more yakitori? Absolutely. I First, it was very daunting for me to kind of learn mm -hmm. how to do yakitori, but after with some of your guidance and watching some of your videos, I definitely will be trying this a lot more often in person. So for others that are watching, you know, they might feel it's daunting. What was, what would you say was sort of maybe the hardest part or something that you noticed was a big lesson today in the yakitori making? Controlling the, the heat, uh -huh. the, the coals, as I've learned, is very important. And kind of watching the little nuances and techniques that yakitori guy does, is able to maintain the flame and make sure that the flare-ups were fanned out. So I think I can do this on my own right now. So yeah, pretty much whatever technique you apply to this, you can do it on other grills. So they're all transferable skills. So I hope you guys saw that, you know, a lot of my techniques that I showed on other grills were able to apply here as well. All right, that's it for today's review on this kondo. We had a chance to make yakitori, some wagyu, and this is HWU's first time making yakitori and we got to learn some lessons together. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're just getting started making yakitori and need some equipment or supplies or just need a refill, make sure to visit my Amazon affiliate shop where I put all the equipment and supplies I've used on this channel so far. And every purchase helps support this channel. All right, that's it for today. See you guys in the next video. Bye, Aki Gang. Bye, Aki Gang. Yeah. <laughs>